at yep. least at the moment. And all I plan to do, I'm not, I'm not going to go into uh, any science because I think there are other people here much better qualified than I am to do that. Um, I thought I'd actually start with, with what we see as our, our origin, origin story, uh, really, which is that um, one of our founding team, who is an old colleague of an old colleague of mine, uh, went to an intellectual property fair in, in Copenhagen and Kurt was there. And Kurt said, I have this technology that we're in the process of patenting, which kills uh, the parasite that causes ick. And fortunately, <coughs> Espen has a large fish tank at home and knew instantly that this was something that was quite important. And we all started talking about what we could do. And the result of that, uh, you see in front of you, Sundu. What I've got here is just a few slides from our standard um, presentation deck that, that we show to investors more than anything. Um, and really starting by, by just summarizing what, how we see the company in, in just one slide. So what we're about is trying to address waterborne pests and diseases very broadly <coughs> using biotechnologies, which we see as, as a way of creating a raft of solutions that will be applicable to, to these sort of issues. Um, what we have right now it is um, based on the work that Kurt's on the University of Copenhagen and his colleagues at the Institute of Ecology in Fageningen in the, in the Netherlands. And what we're trying to build is a, is a first product um, based on the, the lipopeptide that, that Kurt mentioned earlier from Pseudomonas that, that targets the parasite that, that call, uh, causes ich. Um, that's where, where the intellectual property comes from. What we have is a, is a very strong team um, with, with very particularly very good um, development experience, and I'll come on to that just a little bit uh, in a minute, as well as some, some commercial experience in developing uh, and, and bringing to the market similar, similar products. We see ourselves right now as on a, on a two-year development plan to, to reach some significant milestones, and helping us do that is a grant that we got from GUDP, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce in, in Danish, but is, is a Danish government grant focused on uh, sustainable and green technology development. Our business model in the long term is to be uh, involved in, a, in an integrated way from the research and the development through production and into sales. Um, and we see ourselves in the future at least, and I don't want to overestimate um, or over exaggerate what the stage that we've got to, we're still very much in, in an early stage at the moment and we're still trying to develop a single product. But what we see as ha ourselves as having in the longer term is a series of, of, of platforms, each one of which can produce uh, a number of products that can be used to target um, water, as I said, waterborne pests and diseases, not just, um, I mean, aquaculture is, a, is an obvious um, place to be applying that, but we're also looking at things that might uh, work in agriculture and, and pests that are held in the water in agriculture. Uh, human health issues, and we say there are diseases like um, cholera and bilharzia that are very important and, and really spend at least some of their lifetime in the water, and, and some ecological issues as well. In terms of our market, um, we, we came to this very cold, not really understanding um, what the market was like, and, and discovered that there is, is very little reliable data on these markets. Um, I spent several months trying to find it and was quite relieved eventually when people in the industry told me that I shouldn't have been surprised to find that it wasn't there. So what we've done is try to build for ourselves um, some bottom-up models, really looking at numbers of users, quantity of production, uh, how frequently uh, treatments are typically done and, and try to come up with some, some market estimates. What we know and, and probably what won't surprise many of you is, is that Asia looks like um, by far the sig most significant market um, both for aquaculture and for, for ornamental fish. Um, I think it's uh, something like 90% uh, of world, world aquaculture now is, is uh, done in Asia. Um, and 60% of world agriculture in, in China. So we're, we're trying to build networks and contacts there um, because that's clearly going to be where we're going to need to, uh, to, to sell products. Europe and North America also important. We come to a, a, an estimate of the market in freshwater finfish aquaculture 
of $150 million. And this is just for treatment for, for ick. Um, and that, that's the market for, for the active ingredient. And just to give you an idea of the scale, to, to service that whole market would require us to be producing approximately 1,000 tons of material per year. Um, I don't, I'm not sure we could ever reach that whole market, um, but if we can get to sort of 10% of it over the next few years, we'll be, we'll be very glad. Ornamental fish, even more difficult to, uh, to work out how big the market may be. We come to something around half the size, which is really based on the number of household aquariums uh, that, that, that actually exist and, and ignores the, the, the bigger industry players. Um, but it remains a very interesting market to us. I mean, it, it's of a size that is, is not negligible anyway, um, but because it has a somewhat lighter regulatory framework, um, we see that as a place where we can first get onto the market and start selling material while we're still doing the work to get regulation done for, for food fish. We've been out into the market talking to customers or potential customers um, and had so far very good reaction. Um, I think one of the most encouraging things I heard is the, 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 the quote uh, at the bottom left there, which was the, uh, really the, the aquaculture manager for one of the major animal health com uh, companies saying that although they feel that they're very strong in China, the one thing that they know that they need, the one thing he's asked for most often is, is a solution for it. So, so we've been out there. We, ha it, we still haven't got a great deal of quantitative data on the market, but at least anecdotally, the market is big and most people tell us it's actually much bigger than we, we imagine it might be. What we've done up to now, well, we've set, set up a company, in fact, in fact, two companies. We've, we formed um, Sundew in Copenhagen in 2018. <laughs> uh, Leon of last year, we also we formed a subsidiary company in the Netherlands, which we see commercially as a very interesting place for us to be. Uh, we have a website, which um, you're welcome to go and see, sundew.bio. We completed a license with, with the University of Copenhagen and with the Institute of Ecology, um, which gives us uh, exclusive worldwide rights to this technology. We completed a material transfer agreement and that, that picture of me grinning stupidly uh, on the left there is actually when, when I'd just been across to the Institute of Ecology and picked up a single Petri dish with a couple of smears of the, of the uh, Pseudomonas in it. and and really realizing that we have to build, you know, the, 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 the tons, tens of tons, hundreds of tons from, from that single smear uh, was quite something. In terms of funding, so far um, we, we've um, funded it ourselves uh, as founders, at least we had until the end of last year when we got this GUDP grant. Um, the grant uh, program started in January that, that amount of money is split with our partners, uh, Kurt at, at the University of Copenhagen and Klaus Sternberg at uh, the Danish Technical University and also, also Dansk Aquaculture, which is the, the trade body for, for uh, Danish fish farmers, trout farmers in particular, I think. Um, with that money, we took on our, our first employee and have set up a lab. And that, that is Bo Chan, uh, who's a very experienced microbiologist um, I was going to say standing in the lab, it actually is more standing by the lab because that single table at the moment is it, um, the HPLC machine on there and a couple of other small pieces of equipment. And we have started producing material. Um, we, uh, as of this week, I understand that we, we've started to produce, we're at the level of a few grams. But the picture at the bottom of the slide there is, is actually the first material that we produced from, from what I brought back on, on that Petri dish. So, so the, uh, the drop on the right uh, had, has the very first material that we produced. And we've built a network in the market um, with people who can advise us. I mean, not, none of us is an expert either on fish uh, or on parasites or on the market that we need to sell into, but uh, we're, we're starting to build a team uh, around us, that, which is really the development team and the commercial team that, that can help us with that. And, we, and we're starting to go out to, to talk to investors. Um, as far as the future is concerned, we're really working on a program, as I said, a development program 
with, with, with five aims. So in production, we hope that within two years, we're able to be producing at around 100 kilos. Uh, and this is where I should say that um, much of our team came out of a Swiss company called Evolver, um, which had a great deal of experience producing specialty chemicals uh, by fermentation. They, they used yeast, obviously we're using bacteria here, but, but they, are, they are a group that have several times taken things from this very early stage where we are at the moment through development, scaling up, um, getting the cost of goods down and, and doing the regulatory and marketing work that's enabled them to, to launch products. On the regulatory side, within you know, we have no illusions about um, actually being able to sell it at least to, to aquaculture within two years. But what we do want to do is make sure that we have a very clear view of how we go through the regulatory process and that we've started building up the data files that we're going to need uh, to, to show people that this, this product is useful and safe. Um, the, the one particular um, exception to that uh, is that a, a lot of the EU has a regulatory exemption for small pet animals, and that includes pet fish. Um, so we're hoping to have, have gone through some of that, at least in some countries within those two years. We're hoping to have started, if not making actual sales, and then getting commitments for sales. The, within the aquaculture market, we've got uh, a number of groups actually now testing the product and, and hopefully having positive results with it. And that we've started to identify uh, new applications, whether, whether that's the, the first bio, for the first biocost um, product or where, for if it's related um, lipopeptides, we're, we're very neutral on. Um, and, and we're also, you know, whether that's in aquaculture, whether it's in human disease, whether it's ecological is also something that, that at the moment we have a very open mind. And we haven't really started that work yet, but want to get down to it in the next, uh, next year. The challenges that we face um, on the sales side is absolutely market penetration. You know, we're, coming, we're coming to a market which is um, fragmented, which you know, it is mainly in Asia, which is not close to where we are, with, with a new product um, to solve a problem that is already, um, you know, can already be dealt with. That Kurt was talking about the use of, of, of formalin and parasitic acid. So, so there are solutions as well. So we're going to have what is probably going to be a somewhat higher price, but we hope better solution. We've got to get out into that market. Um, the regulation is never going to be trivial. Um, so again, as I say, putting together that, that probably enormous package of data that shows that we're, we are safe, um, both for the fish and, and for humans and that, that we're environmentally benign, that we can find new products and across a range of targets, whether that's the, the different fish, um, whether it's, as I said, outside of fish and, and other targets completely and, and different pathogens. Sorry, and that's two minutes, Andy. I then that will be no problem. Uh, scaling up, you know, to, to get to ton scale from gram scale, you know, we, we've got to go up. I haven't actually done the maths, but I think that's sort of tens, tens of million fold. We've done it before. The group's done it before. They're very confident that they can do it, but there, there's a lot of problems that will need to be solved, uh, getting from where we are now to 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 that point. And at some point, we're going to need funding. Um, we're having some very, very good conversations with the investors at the moment, but they're, they're at the very early stage and, and we don't have any money. Um, so I guess that the, the, the message I would, uh, would, would, would finish on is that if, uh, if anyone that's listening feels that they can contribute uh, to that in any way, we'd be very glad to, uh, to hear from you. Um, my contact details are there. I think we're easy to find on LinkedIn. I think you can contact us via a website. Um, so yes, to, to finish, thanks very much for, for the opportunity. Um, congratulations to everyone that's been involved in, in this project. And I've been listening to what's been going on all day and, and the volume of uh, high quality work is really very impressive. Great. Uh, thanks very much, Andy. And uh, thanks to Kurt as well. Um,